Anna Knezovic from Florida has now been gone for 12 days after going to Madrid. Vanishes the same night a guy shows up hiding his face with a helmet and spray painting over security cameras. And it's still a missing person 12 days in. So she went there. Why? Because she was going through a divorce and she was trying to get her life and her head together. All right. She was planning to travel to Barcelona with a friend a couple of days after she disappeared. Never showed up at the train station. No word. Anna's brother, Felipe, says Spanish police went to Anna's apartment yesterday, found no signs of robbery. Text messages sent supposedly from Anna's phone the day after she vanished, saying she met some guy after therapy and he's great. They're going to his house, spotty cell service. People who know her say she didn't talk like that. She wouldn't have acted like that. And that the Spanish seemed like it was put through a translation app, that the idiomatic nature of it, that the vernacular wasn't right for a native speaker, which she was. We have now obtained, never heard before by the public, voice messages from Anna to a friend that one, I think, helps clear up any question about what was going on that day in terms of whether she had just met somebody or whether she was going to go do something and just who she was as a person. So I have two for you. First one is a voice message that she sent to a friend January 22nd. That's a week and a half before her disappearance, just so you can get a feel for what she was like here. Hey, good morning. Uh, I woke up, went to the gym, got the apartment ready. I'm going to buy some like clean stuff now. And I fixed my hair, my nails, and I'm, I'm just heading back. How are you? I miss you too. Bye. Meticulous. You know, somebody who likes to tell people what's happening, right? Very detailed. So would she just take off and, and not say anything to anybody? Leads us to the next voice message. Now, this is on the same day that she's believed to have disappeared. February 2nd, she was last seen 10 o'clock at night. The guy with the spray painting was about 9.30 at night. Noon that day, she leaves a message for her friend. This is what she says. I saw an apartment that I loved yesterday. So hopefully it will be mine. I don't know. I am now on my way to see another one. And everything is doing great. I'm, I'm feeling actually really good. I'm going on Monday to Barcelona with a friend of mine. It's just a day trip. We're going and then we're coming back. Uh, she's very excited about it. She had a plan. She doesn't sound like somebody was looking to take off to go to some ashram, and she didn't mention meeting anybody. Joining me now is Brandy Smith, longtime friend of Anna's and of her estranged husband. They're going through a divorce. That's why I say that. David, thank you very much, and I'm sorry uh, that you're in this situation. Thank you. Uh, Brandy, what do you want people to know about your friend? Anna was a very calm person. She was a very intelligent person, very calculated person. I definitely don't think that those text messages were from her at all. That's Anna and I when we were in Colombia visiting her family about 12 years ago. Um, she's a great tour guide. She's very smart. She's very intelligent. She doesn't take risks. We were in Medellin. We were on the cable cars. She's not a reckless kind of person. So I don't believe that those text messages were from her either. Now, you have experience with investigations. Um, does this feel like a missing person situation to you? It absolutely feels like a missing person's investigation because she would have messaged her friends, her girlfriends. This is what women do. Women message each other and tell them what's going on. So one, two of her girlfriends, she would have absolutely messaged them whether things were going good, whether things were going bad. It's very unusual for her to not get in touch with any of her girlfriends at all. Now, you know David, her husband. Uh, does it strike you as unusual that even though they're going through a hard time, uh, allegedly, that he did not go to Spain to look for his missing wife? I can't really speak to that because I don't know what exactly was happening in their marriage, but I would certainly think that 
uh, they met, uh, I was with them the night that they met in 2010. I would certainly think after all of this history that they spent together that he would go looking for her. You were at their wedding. They actually met uh, at that event. Um, but you are not in, have you been in contact with him lately? Have you reached out? I have not, no. Hmm. Um, we have an open invitation, obviously, to him uh, to participate in the reporting here about what's going on. If you if you hear from him, please uh, let him know as well. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.